Kyiv says 400 invading troops were killed in a Ukrainian New Year's Day strike on Russian-controlled Makivka, but Moscow says just 63 soldiers were killed. Thousands of people have been queuing to pay their respects to the former Pope Benedict XVI, who died on New Year's Eve, age 95. Thousands of people in Brazil pay their last respects to the king of football ahead of his funeral on Tuesday. Unseasonably warm temperatures in many parts of Europe are causing widespread snow shortages, wreaking havoc for ski resort operators and winter sports enthusiasts. This is alleged footage from the scene of a Ukrainian New Year's Day attack on a complex in the Russia-controlled city of Mikivka. It's where Russian troops have been temporarily billeted. Ukraine claims up to 400 Russian soldiers were killed in the incident. Moscow acknowledges losses, but far fewer. As a result of a strike by four missiles with a highly explosive warhead on a temporary deployment point, 63 Russian servicemen were killed, said Igor Konashenkov. All the necessary assistance and support will be provided to the relatives and loved ones of the deceased servicemen. Either way, the strike could be one of the deadliest known incidents involving Russian conscripts so far and will do little for morale in Moscow. The past few days have seen several Ukrainian strikes in Russian-controlled Donetsk. It comes as Moscow sent missiles raining down on targets across Ukraine. In his nightly address, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has warned Russia may be planning a new sustained missile attack. We have information that Russia is planning a prolonged attack with Shahed, said Zelensky. Its bet may be on exhaustion, on exhaustion of our people, our air defence, our energy sector. Once again, residents of the capital, Kyiv, are experiencing powered heating outages after Monday night's Russian strikes on energy infrastructure. It's been almost two years since a British flag was lowered from the European institutions, and that was supposed to be that. But now there are reports in the British media that the infamous referendum may not be as final as the government of the day made out. A poll commissioned by The Independent found 65% of Britons want a repeat of the 2016 vote on Brexit. Just one year ago, that number was 55. The UK is being battered by economic and government crises and still seems unable to control its borders. 56% of Britons are convinced that leaving the EU hurt the economy. Twelve months ago, that number was 44. The Brexit benefits promoted so passionately by its most prominent advocates haven't materialised, or at least not yet, and the country's global influence has worsened significantly. Now, the poll finds a majority of those questioned would like to see a return to the European family, 54% as opposed to 46 previously. But there is a snag. Only 22% of the same sample group believed it would be possible to call a new referendum within five years. Thousands of people have been paying their respects to the late Pope Benedict XVI, whose remains are lying in state at St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. The 95-year-old died on New Year's Eve. Mourners started queuing hours before his body was transferred from the nearby monastery where he passed away. Benedict was a controversial leader for some, but was revered as a stalwart of traditional Catholic values by others. He was both a great and humble person. Everybody could understand him. But I would say that it was this. His, he was not afraid to face the questions of today. He was, he was very open in, in that regard. For me, he was an innovator, mainly because he was the keeper of what the faith of the Church has been for 2,000 years. Benedict led the Catholic Church for eight years before stepping down due to ill health in 2013. His body will lie in state for three days. The online reactions to the death of Pope Benedict XVI have been rather mixed. That's largely due to the perception that he could have taken more action against sexual abuse claims that have rocked the church before and during his papal tenure. Take a look at this, for example. It's a statement put out by SNAP, a survivor's network for people who faced abuse in the church. In it, they directly accuse the former pope of being an abuse enabler, saying that Benedict was more concerned about the church's deteriorating image and financial flow than making true amends to victims of abuse. 
And it's not just alleged claims of impropriety while he was Pope. In this report, commissioned by the church in Munich, put out in 2022, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, as the then former Pope was known, was directly implicated in sexual abuse claims for priests that he was responsible for. Now, he's always denied any wrongdoing personally. However, it's the scale of some of these allegations that have made people angry online. The same report notes how at least 497 victims were involved, more than half of whom were between the ages of just 6 to 14. Now, on the other hand, some online have sought to defend the former Pope with starting the process of kicking out or defrocking abusive priests from the church. However, for many victims groups, firing certain abusive priests is never going to be enough to atone for some of the serious crimes that they committed. For these people, Benedict's death is not a moment to remember his life, but is another painful reminder of tragic events. Thousands of people queued to enter the ground of Pele's former club Santos in order to pay their respects to the world-famous player. The Brazilian icon died last week, aged 82. Monday marked the end of three days of state mourning for the football hero. Later on Tuesday, there will be a procession through the streets of Santos to a private family burial. Ordinary Brazilians waited in file for hours to be able to say their last goodbye. With them, Neymar Santos Sr., the father of another global football star, Neymar, who kissed Pelé's forehead. Today is very emotional, very sad to lose the king, but happy for what he's done for our city, for Brazil and for the world. He represented everyone, united everyone, he united clubs. That's what was great about him. That's what we're missing today. The queues went on long into the night. Fans had 24 hours to pay their last respects to the king of football, as he was known. Pele was the only player in history who was able to win three World Cups in his lifetime. Much of the Alps are looking decidedly short of snow for this time of year. Unseasonably warm winter weather in Europe's central mountains is causing headaches for ski resort operators. In Switzerland, what there is of the white stuff is said to be of the wrong kind. Look, the snow is really wet, this mountain railways director says. It's no longer constant. It's like in spring. The snow actually has to bind, and that doesn't work with a lot of water. Wide stretches of parched grass are a sharp contrast to the recent frigid weather and blizzards in parts of the U.S. On a spot stretching from France to Romania, many parts of Europe are enjoying warm, sunny weather. It's upset the plans of many tourists who had been dreaming of snow during this holiday season, but instead have temperatures reminiscent of May. But skiers and skaters never fear. Forecasters say cold weather is on its way. There is a glimmer of hope for French cinema. In 2022, audience numbers were up more than three quarters of their pre-COVID attendances, according to figures from the French National Cinema Centre. But the recovery remains fragile and partly linked to the release of the second part of the Avatar saga. Cinema themselves have had to rethink the movie experience to attract new spectators. In this Parisian complex, seats were vamped up and side panel screens were added to make for a more immersive film adventure. Other venues have opted for a more varied and eclectic cinematic experience. This Parisian cinema offers movies both old and new, from blockbusters to avant-garde classics. Prices are also kept down. Here you can expect to pay six euros for a full price ticket and just four for the reduced price. And the formula seems convincing. Really, the project of this cinema that appeared here seven years ago has been to try and attract people and all the best films of the year in one place and to try and make it work. And as it happens, the real good surprise of 2022 is that we just had the third best year in our history. The president of the French National Cinema Centre said he was confident for the year 2023, 
and hopes for a return to pre-pandemic levels.